Hello friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, from today onwards, we are going to conduct series of lectures on communicative skills. Friends, this is the first session where we are going to talk on one of the most important skills that is listening. So, we are going to teach you how to, uh, how to, how to teach a uh, listening and uh, how it is an important theory. Friends, for the discussion on the topic, we have with us in our studios Dr. Renu Tomar. Dr. Renu Tomar is an assistant registrar in Guru Gobind Singh IP University. She has uh, almost 17 years of uh, teaching as well as uh, administrative experience. Through her we always get in-depth knowledge on various topics of education and we believe that through this series also you are going to develop good communicative skills. This is the first session where we are going to discuss more and more on listening and how to develop this skill. Friends, if you wish to ask questions from Dr. Renu Tomar, then do call us through our toll-free number. Our number is 1-800-110-430. I repeat, our number is 1-800-110-430. Friends, if you wish to develop this uh, skill of listening, if you feel so that you are uh, not attentive and you are unable to grab certain things uh, which are said to you, then you can ask questions from uh, our expert, Dr. Renu Tomar. You are just requested to call in the last 10 minutes of the lecture only as well as kindly ask questions pertaining to the topic only. Now, I would like to welcome our guest Dr. Renu Tomar once again and would request her to help us understand what listening is and how one can develop this skill. Hello, ma'am. Welcome to the lecture. Hello, Kitika. Thanks a lot. Namaskar, viewers. If you remember, we have touched upon communication skills before also. In one of our lecture which I took, we talked about teaching teaching uh, global language that is English in a multilingual country that is India. In that, while dealing with the skill, we just touched upon the basic skills. Whenever we talk about English, the very first skill which we generally we have to talk about and which is generally we are introduced to as soon as we are born, in fact before we are born is listening. The four major skills which we would be doing would be listening, speaking, reading and writing. Today we shall be dealing and trying to cover all the aspects of listening, its theoretical aspects as well as its practical aspects which teacher should be knowing as to teach listening as well as the person who is trying to improve one's listening, he or she also should be knowing which are the theoretical and practical aspects one should be working upon. Winston Churchill said that courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. As Apictesis has said, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. But friends, do we really listen? The fact is this that usually whenever we say that we are going to, we are listening, the fact is that we are waiting for the opportunity to speak. So, it is just hearing which is going on, it is not listening which is going on. Whenever we talk about communicative skill, communicative skill has two modes, one is receptive, another is expressive. Receptive means using the communicative skill as an ability to use and express the information that is expressive. As we have already touched upon, the four skills of English language are listening, speaking, reading and writing. The, what are the goals of language curriculum? Let us talk about uh, teaching listening in the formal system, in the schools. The goal of language curriculum is twofold. One is attainment of basic proficiencies such as required in natural language learning and development of language into an instrument for abstract thinking and knowledge acquisition. So, as one of the goals states that we should be focusing on attainment of basic proficiency. So, this makes all the skills related to communication very important and listening becomes one of the most important. In fact, the researchers have proven that 45 percent of the time 
is spent in using listening skill but when it comes to teaching the listening skill it gets the least weightage least importance the result is that usually whenever we are uh, whenever we are trying to teach the communication skill to the students uh, we are omitting listening and the result is that we are uh, we end up with poor listeners what is listening effective listening is a process of analyzing sound organizing them into recognizable patterns interpreting the pattern and understanding the message by inferring the meaning so in real listening meaning and evaluation of message takes place before listener can respond as friends you can make out from the definition which i have given that listening is a process it it involves pattern of activities which takes place in the mind of a, a listener he would analyze the sound then he would organize them into the recognizable pattern after that he or she would try to interpret and comprehend and after comprehended the message he or she would be inferring the message and the result would be the response which we are going to get either in verbal form or in written form or in action form so effective listening is a process one thing is should be very clear to us and it is a process which takes time it is not a process which can be introduced in a day and it can be mastered easily it takes years of practice it should begin from the very beginning uh, whenever uh, generally people would say if you would ask them do you have any kind of a problem with listening he or she would say no listening is not my problem but the fact is that when the person is answering the person is interpreting listening as hearing let us accept the fact that listening and hearing are not the same hearing is just one of the stage of listening hearing is just picking up the sound waves which we are which are transported to the brain while listening is a communicative process listening is a skill as well as a process and hearing is one of a uh activity the first the foremost stage which is part of the process and of course to become a good listener we have to be a very focused uh, we should be hearing things in a very focused manner so our uh, what what is the problem generally when we are listening the problem is that our thought process is very fast and the speech speed is comparatively slow in fact the speech speed is 150 words per minute and the thought process is 500 words per minute so the result is we our attention gets distracted and as our attention get distracted uh, we are not able to pay attention to the listening so uh, we have to learn to focus focus in uh, focus as soon as the first stage of listening begins that is hearing Uh, another thing which we should be uh, as a teachers as as adults we should be accepting is that it is a likable skill particularly for the students that is why it is very easy to introduce and it is very important to the speaking if the person is not good listener he or she cannot be good speaker and uh, from the, the this pyramid which i have made you can see that we have the four skill the the, the to, at the top of the pyramid we have writing followed by reading then speaking and then listening as far as extent used you can see that listening is being used to the maximum and writing in our day to do life as well as in a life as a whole is being used to the minimal but still when it comes to extent taught writing gets the maximum weightage and listening gets the least weightage this results in us having poor listeners as far as communicative skill is concerned and uh, as uh, it was evident from the pyramid that this is the first skill if the student is poor at the first skill that is listening how can we expect he to be better at the other skills so because all the all the skills are interlinked to be better at speaking 
one has to be good at listening and if he is a good listener then naturally he or she would be having good vocabulary that makes a person good reader as well as good writer. There are certain fallacies about listening like listening and hearing are same, uh, uh, listening is not my problem, good readers are good listeners. No, it is not so. Good readers may not be good listeners and uh, another very interesting fallacy is that listening improves with age. How can listening improves with age? It is a skill. It has to be learnt. So, age has no correlation with listening. Let us accept the fact that listening has to be learnt. It has to be taught. Another fallacy about listening amongst teachers is that Teaching listening skill is difficult. What are the objectives of listening? The objectives of listening are to learn, to learn the uh, to learn about certain aspects, to acquire knowledge, to acquire information. Another objective is to understand things in a better perspective. When we want to improve the uh, improve our perspective, then we would go for listening. Another important objective and which is only restricted to listening is to advise. To become a counselor or to counsel somebody, to advise somebody, we have to be very good listener. Another objective that is the fourth one and uh, it is uh, most important because it is usually uh, something which helps us to relieve our boredom or stress. Listening by listening music, we are able to uh, get rid of stress. We, we are able to get rid of our boredom. What are the steps of listening? First as we have already touched upon is hearing. Hearing means just catching the spoken part and uh, when the person is able to repeat a fact then we would say that the person has heard it. For example, there is a weather report a person is listening to and in that weather report it is stated that there is going to be rainfall and thunderstorm in Delhi. When the person is asked to repeat that what was the weather report record regarding Delhi and he is able to say that there is going to be rainfall in Delhi. That means he has heard it right. Second step to listening is understanding. What is understanding? Understanding means that listener have heard as well as understood in its own way. Here the perception would come, here the, the knowledge of the person would also come and the experience would, would also come. If the person is asked again about the weather report and he, he says that he has understood from the weather report that there is going to be heavy rainfall in Delhi. Then we would say that the person has understood because he has applied his information, his knowledge, his experience as to understand the thing. And now it is the third uh, step of listening which is very important is judging. Judging is based on our experience. Usually whenever we have understood something we try to judge that whether our understanding is appropriate or not. So, when we have just that there is going to be heavy rainfall in Delhi, then we will try to cross check in our mind that whether Delhi is really going to have heavy rainfall. We will ask ourselves this question that uh, the in the weather report it has been stated by the concerned person that there is going to be thunderstorm and rainfall. So, why did I conclude? Why did I understand that there is going to be heavy rainfall? One, because this is my experience that whenever we have the thunderstorm, we have the heavy rainfall. So, we judge that there is going to be heavy rainfall. So, so this is how we would say that listening is complete because we have come down to a conclusion, we have come down to an inference. After we come down to an inference only then we can say that yes, we have listened. And of course, the result would be that we would be either taking our umbrella along and would be cautious of the fact that there is going to be heavy rainfall as well as thunderstorm. So, we will take care of all those aspects whenever we will go out on that particular day. From this, what we conclude is that listening is an active process. 
active process having certain aspects first was hearing second is filtering filtering comes before uh, before comprehending filtering also include judging whenever we judge a thing that we usually filter what filter we would filter what is required and what is not required like we might have heard in the weather report lot of aspects but when we are asked about the weather in delhi we would be filtering the information as of our need which is uh, thunderstorm and uh, rainfall in delhi so we have given up the redundant information and we have accepted the uh, required information after having filtered we comprehend that is we understand we absorb we assimilate and then we try to remember remembering means that it would be stored in the memory and then we would be responding as i already said that we would be responding by either taking a umbrella along and taking care of the fact that there is going to be thunderstorm so uh, whenever we are going to park our vehicle so we will be parking somewhere away from the tree and we will be taking umbrella for uh, just to be cautious because there is going to be heavy rainfall so from this what we conclude is that active listening has lot of steps and those steps have to have to be taught have to be governed so that the person becomes a better listener particularly because we are talking in the context of english which is a second language these things become more much more important there are two kind of listening two types of listening one is active listening another is passive listening and we are subjected to both type of listening active listening as well as passive listening what is active listening active listening is generally a two way we listen to somebody we respond then again we listen and we respond what is passive listening passive listening is not dynamic it is one way we listen to certain information and the process involved would be that after having identified the topic after having predicting the information we select or reject the information skim scan in for the opinion and take notes or act the simple example would be that whenever we visit the airport or railway station we we would listen to the announcements which are being made and we would pick up the information which is relevant to our flight or which are relevant to our train which we have to board so uh, passive listening uh, the action is not based upon communicating again or uh, uh, responding again but uh, gathering the information or forming the opinion and both the type of listening are very important and both need to be taught there are two approaches of listening we would be dealing with another types of listening as well but first of all let us try to touch upon what are approaches to listening the generally the linguist would say that there are two type of approaches to listening we one is top down approach another is bottom up approach what is top down approach top down approach as the name suggest that the teacher does not break down the written piece but let the learning be based on the knowledge of the world topic or culture student understand literal meaning select relevant information recognize redundant information connect ideas and make inferences example would be that uh, one of my friend told me that he has an appointment with the dentist as soon as he said i had an image of a dentist and his apprentice and of my friend in the dental chair and he is being attended to by the dentist it's a painful procedure which is being uh, performed by the dentist and his apprentice after having done some kind of a procedure my friends leaves the dentist with some discomfort or with some pain and of course uh, after having got rid of the problem for which he had to visit the dentist so what i have done over here is that i as soon as the statement was made i selected the relevant information in case, in this case the relevant information was dentist appointment with the dentist what the dentist is going to do and it was based upon what it was based upon my knowledge my information and after having connected the ideas i am able to infer i am able to conclude that 
what kind of visit my friend is going to have with the dentist. The second approach which we need to touch upon is bottom up approach. Bottom up approach is basically a linguistic approach. Here the, the teacher focuses on learners lexical and grammatical competence. The input is scanned for the familiar words and grammatical knowledge is used to work out the relation between elements of sentence. Students usually listen to uh, identifying sounds. He would be working out where the words begin and end. He would be dealing with unknown words. The student would be recognizing where phrase and clause ends and he would also be making use of sentence stress and of course uh, recognizing chunks of language. In uh, for teaching for teaching uh, from this approach the teacher may use flash card or provide exercise on homophones like there, there, one, one. So, uh, after having practiced the student would be able to differentiate uh, th how the homophones are pronounced. So, here the stress would be on the pronunciation. F few teachers rather quite many teachers disagree with the fact that we should be dealing with the bottom approach because it is accepted that as far as the pronunciation is concerned it can be learnt as the person learns the language. But the fact is that by working upon this approach we would be improving the pronunciation of the person as well as making the student realize the, the relation between the grammatical components so that the person is able to understand the thing as it is being spoken and it should not be misinterpreted. There are certain sub skills of listening. First is pronunciation as we have already talked about and which is usually dealt while we do we tackle the language from the bottom up approach. Then in the pronunciation what we are doing is we are trying to cover the aspects related to discriminating the sounds. We are also trying to cover uh, processing of speech. We are also trying to cover the stress and intonation. We are coping with processing different accents. Then there are types of listening. The types of listening as uh, one uh, type we have already discussed which is active and passive. Then there is scanning. Scanning means when we are listening for specific information. Scanning uh, is similar to the fact that when we hear the announcement at railway station. We are listening for specific information. We are concentrating and focusing only on the train which we have to board and we would not be listening to the information related to other trains which are not of our not of our use. What is skimming? Skimming is that when we whenever we try to listen for the general information. It is comprehensive listening. Usually whenever we are listening to some movie, we are listening uh, to some song for the first time. Usually it is comprehensive listening because we are listening for a general information and after having uh, listened to some movie or theatre or some audio speech the first reaction would be the kind of a uh, we would be skimming and we would be providing what we have inferred the main idea the characters all those things would be stated we will not be able to uh, point out that which what are the specific informations in that particular piece, uh, piece of literature or piece of uh, language or information. Another important thing when we talk about skimming is that here we would be uh, not concentrating on the grammatical aspect. We will not be concentrating on the pronunciation aspect rather we would be listening for general information. Then there is intensive listening. Intensive listening means that whenever we are trying to listen to everything. We uh, listen to all the things very minutely so that we can answer all the aspects. And usually whenever we talk about talk about intensive listening as a teacher we would be providing the piece of literature or a piece of information which the person would be listening to. It would be very small because concentration span of a student or a person is very small. So accordingly in case of intensive listening the information which is being subjected to is is not large it is small it runs for few minutes. In case of extensive listening it is detailed 
and usually again just like the it's it involve most of skimming and here the person would be provided with the massive text he would be listening uh, listening to different recordings of a same kind of a thing and then inferring some kind of a information suppose if you have to decide the kind of a listening uh, how to improve your listening skill at times what we do is that we would go to certain uh, websites we would be hearing certain things and then uh, certain recording certain videos and interviews and after that we would be concluding that which are the aspects which we should be covering as to improve our listening ability this is extensive listening then listening for pleasure and most important is pretense listening which most of the students uh, indulge in pretense listening means i pretend to listen when i am not listening and intuitive listening this is also important particularly when you want to counsel somebody then intuitive listening comes to your aid here we would be reading between the line as well as the body language of the person would also become very important in the case of intuitive listening uh, now let us talk about the barrier to listen barrier to listening there are two kinds of barrier basically physical and people related what are physical uh, barriers the physical barriers are the interruption the notes the uncomfortable environment uh, whenever there is overload of the content and there is defective sound system these physical barriers leads to the problem in listening similarly there is people related barriers people related barriers are health of a listener if i am suffering from a fever as a speaker then naturally i wouldn't be i wouldn't be giving the information in a very confident manner and the listener would be suffering so the health of the listener as well as the speaker is very important the disability if the speech disorder the speaker has a speech disorder then of course the person wouldn't be very clear and similarly if the listener has the hearing disability then also the person wouldn't be very clear another important aspect is that whenever the speaker is inattentive we have already said that why why the speaker gets inattentive because uh, because of the span the the span as to focus apart from that the our mind functions at a very fast pace in comparison to the speech then most important is lack of formal educational experience with listening this is the barrier which we usually don't talk about because we are not dealing with it we are not teaching to our students with this note thank you ma'am thank you so much for giving us this uh, session on listening friends there is lot more for you you are just requested to be with us as we are going to give you more and more knowledge on listening how you can develop the skill and to become a good communicator so be with us and keep watching us thank you Hello friends welcome back to this 
session friends as you know that today we are talking on uh, one of the important uh, communication skills one of the uh, four important communication skills that uh, is a uh, listening and we are trying to understand uh, uh, what listening is and why listening is important and how listening further uh, uh, adds on and how it helps you to be a good communicator further friends for the discussion on the topic we have with us in our studios uh, the subject expert dr dinu tomar dr dinu tomar is assistant registrar in guru gobind singh ip university she has uh, almost 17 years of teaching as well as administrative experience so let's take advantages from her experiences and let's try to ask questions from her on the following topic that is listening for that friends you need to talk to us through our toll free number a number is 18001010430 i repeat a number is 18001010430 now i would like to welcome our guest dr dinu tomar once again and would request her to continue further hello ma'am welcome back thank you tika good afternoon viewers we have we were talking about barriers to listening now let us talk about how we can improve listening as far as our role as a teacher is concerned to to be a good teacher or to teach listening to our student we have to engage them in the uh, in the listening practices what kind of listening practices we can be we can be giving to our students as to improve their listening ability or listening skill first important aspect is we usually say that uh, whenever we teaching certain skills we need not concentrate on grammar this is not true friends to understand any language you have to focus on the grammar you have to understand the grammar and after that you should be having the basic information and basic knowledge of the vocabulary which would be which which we require for understanding what is being spoken to for example if somebody talks to me uh things about it and because i don't have the comprehension of that kind of a vocabulary i would be poor listener despite the fact that the person might be giving me very good information i wouldn't be able to gather an information because i don't have vocabulary similarly if i have understood the grammar of the english language i wouldn't be able to understand the language so the grammar pronunciation intonation should be taught to the students and it has to be taught by simple exercises the simple exercises like mime gap fillings these can be provided to the students where they would be not doing much of a written work or not doing much of the speaking work so all the other skills should be minimized and the listening skill should be focused upon while teaching listening another important thing is that whenever we teach listening we have to focus on teaching sub skills as well and we have to teach the strategies of the listening as we have already covered the type of listening we should be focusing on both active and passive listening and we should be uh, teaching them how to devote time to connect speech because if the student is not able to connect the speech then of course the Uh, the person might be able to scan for the information the person wouldn't be able to skim and come out with the with the with the central idea or about the characteristic of uh, of the uh, of the uh, some character which is being talked about or which is being spoken about most important aspect for teaching listening skill is that we should provide them enough opportunities inside the class as well as outside the class I do agree it is very difficult to teach the second language because the teacher can provide the opportunity inside the class but even even the teacher doesn't have so much time the reason being that there is a pressure for the syllabi as well so the teaching opportunities should be uh, should be managed in such a manner that the student is able to uh, able to use the time when he is not doing anything like provide certain audios to them which the student can listen while he or she is walking back home or exercising or doing certain things so if the student is listening uh, more he would be able to grip more vocabulary he would be able to gain more insight into the pronunciation the uh, the grammatical aspect would also improve of the listener and he would be able to uh, explore more 
vocabulary if you provide them different kind of a pieces literary scientific technical then naturally the person would be able to gather more vocabulary and how uh, and would be able to connect the sentences in those things another important thing which is usually not agreed upon by uh, m most of the teachers is that whether we should be teaching how to explore accent to the students accents uh, is something which is very difficult to teach but at least we should be introducing them because in quite many texts he or she would be dealing with the welsh he a welsh accent or uh, uh, the english accent is also divided depending upon uh, where uh, in what context the piece has been written so the person should be at least introduced to basic accents so that he or she can gather the american accent the english accent and of course the our focus should be in being simple indian english so the focus has to be as to listen simple indian english but of course we can introduce the accents as well to make him better listener then there are levels of listening skill the first le first level is when the listener can recognize the familiar words and very basic phrases when spoken to slowly and clearly the example would be whenever we go to some dhaba even a person who is attending to you the waiter he would be able to understand the basic english vocabulary spoken by a foreigner when he or she is talking in english he can understand the uh, water he can understand clean the table he can understand where do i park my car so park car clean the table these are the vocabulary which the listener can familiarize because of the regular usage which he is uh, subjected to so the, he is the first kind of a listener even a child a small child can understand because he is also familiar with certain words if you tell a child that don't go there come here don't do this the child understands because this is the kind of a vocabulary the child has been introduced to so so this is the first level of listening then the second level of listening which have to be introduced after this first listening has been attained would be that a listener can understand phrases and higher frequency vocabulary related to areas of most immediate or personal use for example announcements uh, when uh, when we go to the airport we can understand the announcements even a person who is not well versed with the english even that person can understand the announcements because he is at least well versed with the flight detail he or she is well versed with the time so all those things would be understood by him and he can understand that uh, that information the third stage is or the third level of listener uh, listening ability is when listener can understand the main points of the standard speech on familiar matters encountered in schools or at leisure or when he is listening to uh, certain points for example if the listener is listening to current affairs or news and he is able to pick up the main points he is able to understand the main points of the news when the delivery is slow this is very important friends when the delivery is slow if the listener can understand the main points of the current affairs and the news we can say that this to the listener has come down to the third phase or the third level of having attained listening skill there is fourth level of listening skill which is uh, when the listener can understand extended speech he can understand the lectures he can follow even the complex lines of argument he can provide the topic reasonably familiar uh, uh, if he is familiar with that topic then he would be able to provide the detail as well like most of the current affairs of news can be understood by the listener we can say that the listener has uh, uh, has uh, reached fourth level then there is a fifth level fifth level is when he when we would say that he has understood the extended speech and even uh, he can understand the points even when it is not well structured that means the information of the vocabulary the information of the context uh the information of the things which are being talked the world the culture is so clear to him that he can make out the relationship between uh between the contents which is implied which may not be very clear 
So, here if the person is able to uh, listen to the television program or films, he can understand without much effort, we can say that the listener has reached the fifth level, sixth and the last and the when we can say that the listener has become a good listener is the level where the listener can understand the spoken language, he, whether it is live or it is in the broadcast manner. So, uh, even when it is being delivered at the fast pace, he can understand the listening. Uh, friends, after having talked about the levels, levels of listening, we should be uh, indulging in uh, the, uh, the, the, the different aspects of listening. How to become a better listener? To become a better listener, to become a better listener, we should be teaching the strategies to the listener. How do we teach the strategies to the listener? As to teach the strategies to the listener, he should be taught two aspects. One is how to get the help, another is how to help himself that is self-help. For getting help, the listener would be asking for the clarification. There is soft way to ask for the clarification. We should be asking uh, after having listened to certain discourse or listened to certain piece of information, we should be asking could you explain what you mean by I am not sure, I am not sure if I understood correctly, do you mean this? If we ask the question in this context, it will be evident to the speaker as well that you have listened to him and you are paying attention. So, the, uh, the listening would also be complete and the speaker would also be happy. The second uh, effort for the strat as, a, as a strategic effort for strengthening listening skill is self-help. Self-help means uh, we should be uh, paraphrasing, we should be practicing more gap fillers, miming exercises, speaking more clear, more slowly than uh, fasting up speed. Then uh, for self-help, we should be restructuring approximation of the information. If uh, if we have listened that they, the, the, about the rose and if we are able to say that there was a flower which was used, we, the flower which was mentioned by a speaker, then of course that means that we have listened, we have practiced approximation. All these things shows that we have listened to the aspects and for this we have to practice either through restructuring, through gap fillers, through miming exercise or by keeping the conversation going. So, the self help is very important as well as getting help is also very important. Friends, if you remember previously also we talked about the learning material. Learning material in the case of listening is very important. There can be different kind of a learning material, there can be audio recordings, there can be uh, personal talk, there can be interviews, there can be audio books or magazines, there can be websites. But whenever we talk about websites, let us be very clear about the fact that as teachers, as adults, we should be cross checking the content several times before we subject those websites to our youngsters, so that the websites have the appropriate information only. We can uh, music and rhymes is known to be a very good listening material because usually the human brain welcomes music and rhyme as it f as it helps to uh, stress de stress as well. Then there are subtitle movies and of course uh, there are uh, things which we can do during the class like uh, some uh, one act play, some English language theatre or some stand up comedy by the students. So, by the time we would be making all other students listen to it. Here let me mention that subtitle movies I have placed almost at the bottom. The reason being whenever we listen to certain movies most of the time that the listener would be wasting time, 50 percent of the time would be wasted uh, in, uh, in hearing the sounds which will not be of use to him like the fight scenes. There, there are uh, the train sound, the bus sound, the, uh, all those sounds are not of relevance. So, 50 percent of the time is being wasted, he or she would not be picking much of vocabulary, he or she would not be doing much of relevant listening. So, that is why I have placed subtitled movies at the, uh, the, at the bottom. 
yes it is a good uh, media but it should be used to the minimal then another important aspect which we should be looking at looking at as teachers is that we should be assessing the assessment of listening uh, is usually either one way or two way in case of one way listening it is formal and regular uh, the another important aspect that whenever we are assessing the one way listening one way listening is again using the uh, materials where the person is subjected to only listening and he is not responding so here uh, the most important thing is that it should be formal and regular formal and regular through the various exercises miming exercises gap filling exercises we can subject to the uh, certain exercises as to assess whether the listening has gone well or not similarly another important aspect is that whenever we are assessing we should see to it that uh, the speaking reading and writing these skills should be limited because assessment which we are doing is of listening not of other three skills so we should be delimiting all the three skills similarly for listening in the case of one way uh, we should be uh, we should not be penalizing the spelling and grammar and most important there should be no translation from l1 to l2 or l2 to l1 that is uh, first language that is the, the 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 mother tongue to the english or english to the mother tongue and uh, another important thing is the task should neither be very easy nor be very difficult for the students so it has to be as per the students level we have already discussed the four levels of the listening uh, listening skill so it has to be as per the uh, level at which the student is so here the age doesn't have to do much uh, what the, the the level of the student has to be decided as per the listening ability of the of the individual in the case of a two way listening the assessment would be applying the marking scheme for understanding pronunciation and finer shades of meaning as well because in the two way the person would be getting more time and he would be more focusing on the uh, other skills so uh, in case of two way listening he should be able to differentiate between the impeding and non impeding error to give you the example of impeding and non impeding error is that uh, the speaker has stated i have a difficult colleague and it has been listened by the listener as i have difficult college so these kind of things can happen and these can really create problem another method as to assess uh, the to assess the listening ability is pictorial method and multiple choice question multiple choice questions is a method which is used to the maximum as well as easiest as well as most beneficial because here the, the here the listener would be just reading and ticking so there will be minimal uh, writing of course reading would be involved but we can also minimize the reading as well by just providing the options to tick another important thing which we need to keep in mind while assessing the listener is that uh, we have to assess for the different kind of sub skills so there would be different details which would be which would be assessed for the listener he may be assessed for the details he may be assessed for the particular information and uh, of course the format has to be provided for, so that minimal writing can be indulged in the listener can indulge in the minimum writing if you remember this is exercise we done previously also uh, in this exercise uh, our uh, target was to guide monica they were, i provided you a uh, our plan i provided you a plan in which monica uh, uh, monica is a friend of sheetal and because she hasn't come to the school for quite a many times the result is that sheetal wants to go to monica's home but all she knows about monica's home is that it is somewhere adjacent to the supermarket and after having given this uh, this particular introduction to the students then the students would be listening to a audio in which monica would be asking different people as to guide her to the supermarket and she would be crossing she would also be giving the version her version of uh, the the tour of the of the way which she has taken 
to visit the Monica's house, how she crossed the Queen Street, how she crossed the Central Avenue, then she meant a policeman who answered. So, these kind of a detail can be added in audio where the listener would be uh, listening to the audio and marking on the map uh, the way which is being taken by Sheetal while reaching the Monica's house. So, this is a very simple as well as this also check the uh, check the processing speed of the listener that whether the person is able to cope up and process process the process the information uh, on a uh, on a good speed this can only be done if the person is uh, aware of the vocabulary and the person is aware of uh, aware of the basic uh, basic level of audio which is being be, which is being listened to him by listened to listened by him or uh, listen by her. We can also have the other uh, other exercises. I am introducing different kind of exercises so that you can understand that how listening sub skills can be taught to the student. Another example which I have taken for listening sub skill is discriminating similar sound. The aim is here for a listener to accurately listen and understand. So, uh, what we can do is we can show two pictures to the uh, to the listener one is pan another is pen. So, after having seen those two pictures student would be saying correct uh, repeating the word uh, each student would be saying in the class pan and pen. They would be repeating to each other they would be uh, also showing the correct picture whenever they are being asked for pan they would be able to show the picture of a pan if they are being asked about pen he would be able to uh, say uh, show us the picture of pen. So, by this uh, by this kind of activity we can help them to discriminate between the sounds. Similarly, we can also take the exercise on pin and pen. We can show the picture of pin and pen and the student should be able to discriminate between the two. We can also have pictures of objects which are homophones in nature and they would be practicing homophones on the basis of those exercises. So, uh, here basically objective is to teach them sub skill which is discriminating similar sound. Here the flashcard can be easily used by the teacher as to teach them how to discriminate the similar sounds. Another exercise which I have taken up uh, and which is also practiced by most of the teachers dictation. Uh, in dictation the objective uh, our objective is, uh, is to improve the listening ability of the uh, of the students only and uh, how do we assess that the student would be here either speaking or writing the word which is being spoken which is being listened by him or her. And in pairs students would be speaking, one would be speaking, other would be writing after having listened to. So, the dictation is a very good form as to teach them uh, listening, uh, uh, listening to the words as well as listening to uh, details as well. Here we can make them understand and interpret to the written word. This can be practiced by the students and this can be practiced by the teacher also. In the case of a practice by the teacher, the assessment would be done uh, either between the students or the assessment would be done by the teacher at the end. This is the skill which we usually most of the teachers have practiced uh, particularly when the students were small, but this can also be practiced later on. Rather than dictating single words, we can dictate the uh, longer text. And if the person is able to uh, understand and write the text, then naturally the person has understood the pronunciation as well as has been able to understand uh, the comprehend, understand and comprehend whatever being spoken to. Another sub skill which is uh, listening for the main idea. Here the we can play an audio about suppose we play an audio about um, the problems at metro stations and uh, after 15 20 minutes if the person is able to inform us the listener is able to inform us that what kind of ideas he has picked up from 
after having listened to an audio of the of the travel to uh, travel in the metro and the scene at the metro station if he is able to inform about the problems he has uh, he has listened to the the um, like the problems can be like there was rush there was a uh, woman compartment and uh, uh, the metro did not stay for very long and the doors of the metro automatically close. So, if the person is able to uh, able to provide us able to speak out those ideas that means that the person has listened to the audio well here to assess what we can do is orally we can put the questions they, they would be generally general questions or uh, what we what he can do is that we can simply show the flash cards and he can select the appropriate flash card like if we show him the flash card of a train and if we show him flash card of the metro station or a or a railway station if he is able to differentiate between the metro station and a railway station that also shows that the person has appropriately at least heard the main idea which was about the metro station another sub skill which i have selected for uh, introducing to the students as teachers is listening for detail. Uh, here of course, uh, this can also be listened all this can also be uh, here also the material would be that of audio cassette by listening to the audio cassette if the person is able to repeat. This is something exercise which we have done as the youngsters as well uh, in the pre nursery and nursery also when uh, the students sing along with the teacher or along with the cassette. So, thereby they are able to prove the fact that they have listened uh, listened to that uh, song or the, the nursery rhyme appropriately. It is a kind of a drill which provides which provides the opportunity for the teacher as to uh, find out that whether the listener has been able to pick up the pronunciation well, intonation is clear to him and he understood comprehended the meaning also uh, appropriately. So, uh, th this way the teacher can assess him on this. Uh, another and the last skill is that when we we it is uh, it is a task listening. Whenever we listen to something we are asking the person to do do something on that basis. Like after having listened to a short story after having listened to uh, uh, listen to some uh, particular person dialogue between two people if the person is able to fill a chart uh, fill a chart with a one word or true and false then naturally we can assess that whether the person has listened to to that particular detail here the person would be doing something uh, that is he would be uh, either through the uh, tick mark or through speaking the person would be uh, uh, the person would be showing that whether he has listened to that particular uh, audio piece or not another important way to assess these kind of a things is a chinese whisper which we usually also uh, indulge in as a plaything like uh, one student having listened to an audio he whispers the, the, it might be just a one liner audio and he whispers to another friend the friend whispers to another friend and this goes on till it comes to the person who started it. So, thereby we are able to judge that how listening affect the meaning of the statement and how misinterpreted it can be by the listener. This is a game we usually played and this also shows that how poor we are at, at our listening ability. Thank you. Thank you ma'am, thank you so much for giving us this session on listening friends, we believe that you have grabbed maximum of knowledge as well as you have learnt a skill called listening which you sometimes take it uh, easy that it is easy to handle and easy to understand. Friends, if you have any question or if you want to give a feedback for this particular lecture, do write to us at info.cc at nic.in. We are taking your leave with the promise that we are going to meet again soon and would be discussing on another skill. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again.